Hey, good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. Super dry conditions persist out here. We're not getting our normal rain for this time of year. Warm and dry, about 77 degrees right now, 11 o'clock in the morning. Look how high that sun is already. Yeah, going to get a little higher for sure today. But mercy, we could use some rain. And I just transferred a thousand gallons using this pump here out of this tank. I needed to clean this tank up. It had a ton of debris down there. There's just a few little leaves and stuff down there right now. And it's empty. I got about a half inch of water in there. But I need to fill that up. This is what I use for my you know, reserve. <laughs> so I moved a thousand gallons out of here uh, to my main catchment tank, which is in pretty good shape right now. A little over half full, but yeah, we could use some rain. Catching great sun on days like this, of course, so there's no issue with solar power. All the rays are in full sun. And just look how blue that sky is. Wow, beautiful. So the best part of Running a YouTube channel for me is my interaction with you guys. I just love that. That's the most fun for me. That's why I keep doing it. Talking shop with all of you guys. It's great. I learn all kinds of things. And I get asked a lot of questions uh, on certain things. And I want to make sure to uh, reply to as much of that as I can. And even make a video about some of your, your suggestions. So I'm going to do that. Uh, more often and today I'm going to get right into it and our good friend Joe from Ohio Woodburner LTD who runs his own YouTube channel very good uh, channel everything about wood burning you could ever imagine and he posed a question to me a little while back about grounding my solar panels. Was wondering, do I ground my solar panels or do I just have them tossed out there ungrounded? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Let me first say that this is how I do things. I'm not suggesting you guys do anything. I'll share what my experience has been over the past 30 years uh, as I do. But anyway, that's my disclaimer out of the way. So I'm sure it might stir up a little controversy, what I'm about to say, and that's okay. So let's go take a peek and talk about the grounding issues, specifically on the solar panels. All right. Okay, so a little background content, first of all. So I've been living for 30 years off-grid and 100% on solar for all of my power needs. And when I first started, I knew nothing. I did have a solar distributor up in the Colorado mountains who, you know, I followed all of his advice, hooked up things exactly like he told me to do. And that's what I did and was thrilled about how everything started to work for me that way. When I first started, I had a very, very small solar system, just a couple of old deep cycle batteries, uh, not even a hundred watts worth of solar at the very beginning. Uh, nothing grounded, never came up in conversation. I just hooked up the panels, a battery, small charge controller, and that was it. And I lived in serious lightning country up in those mountains. I mean, lightning was a real thing. And so for the first few years, I didn't have a ground on anything out there. And when the lightning storms would come through, I could see them coming across the valley at me. I always had a little bit of advance notice. I used to run around and unplug things, just scared to death. And with my solar guys, we had long conversations about grounding versus non-grounding out there in that country. A lot of people did both, you know? I mean, a lot of people grounded everything. A lot of people never bothered, like myself, never bothered with the ground at all. And after a few years of uh, running ungrounded, I decided I would go ahead and ground everything and I drove a ground rod into the into the ground and had a grounded system now I had my solar panel array up in the mountains up on a big tracking pole that was you know 
cemented into the ground, like six, six inch uh, pipe and, you know, a manual tracking array so I could adjust the, the tilt of the panels throughout the year and get the best sun possible. And uh, the panels themselves were not grounded. I had all my system grounded, but the panels were not. And one day a huge lightning storm came through. It was scary. I took a direct hit on the house. I saw it coming. I went and disconnected everything. I mean, I saw everything coming. Turned everything off, disconnected everything. Took a direct hit on the house, blew a hole through my kitchen wall the size of my fist, and grounded on my wood stove <clears throat> is where the lightning grounded. I had equipment that was sitting in my living room completely unplugged. Uh, things, I mean, all kinds of things. A TV, a uh, radio, a lot of different small appliances. Uh, they all got fried. They weren't plugged into anything. The system was off, disconnected. I lost some equipment. I lost a little solar equipment, lost a little charge controller uh, that wasn't tied up to the battery, but just that EMP pulse, right? I mean, it, it just disintegrated a few things. They never worked again. And that was with a ground rod. So the one thing that suffered zero damage was I did not lose one solar panel. Not one. And then fast forward many, many years later, I'm out here in Hawaii living on lava. Uh, a couple of years ago, some of you might remember, I was trying to ground my system. You can see here's some of the things that we were doing. I had a friend out here helping me. We were taking a, you know, a hammer drill and drilling into the lava as far as we could, driving stakes in there multiple stakes around <laughs> and some of them are covered up now by the the jungle but anyway we tried various things to get a ground and all of this was for naught never were able to obtain a, a ground out here and there's a couple of people out here back then this is years ago when i was trying to obtain a ground out here there was some heavy equipment that said they'd come out here and drill a hole into the ground the cheapest bid I got at that time, and this was years ago, was $600. And I couldn't see trying to uh, ground everything for, for that kind of money. I've lived most of my experience off-grid and on solar with ungrounded systems. I've taken a direct hit in the Colorado mountains. I took a direct hit here in Hawaii one time. Same thing. Knew the lightning was around me, which is rare for here, actually. Went around, unplugged everything, disconnected everything. Still lost some equipment when my house took a direct hit, but I didn't lose one solar panel, and not one of those was grounded. Never lost a solar panel. But in both cases, I had disconnected equipment out in the middle of the ground that got fried. Now, this thing didn't get fried, but... When I got hit here years ago as well, I had a few things just sitting out here, not tied into anything, and they got fried. When that lightning hit the house out here in Hawaii, you can still see I've kept the burn mark on the wall, have not repainted, and it blew the Romex out of the wall that was cut off on both ends during some remodeling. So all that was in there was a strip you know, a section of Romex cut off on both ends, not being used for anything, hadn't been used for in years. The EMP blew that piece of Romex through the wall right there. So I have a really healthy fear of lightning. I've been knocked off ladders. I've been knocked to the ground a couple of times up in the mountains from nearby hits. Um, yeah, lightning makes me nervous. When I lost a bunch of equipment up in the mountains, I had everything insured. My insurance adjuster came out there to rack up the damages and cut me a check to replace some stuff. And, uh, you know, I was talking about, well, my system was grounded here and everything. And he goes, that doesn't matter. He said, uh, you know, right now, the company he was working for and who I was insured with said that they were paying for a funeral for four people that 
uh, living in a fully grounded house. House took a direct hit, killed all four people inside, and that was uh, that was rough um, out there in that country when that happened. And I was scared to death and thought I might get killed by lightning, but I lost a little equipment. And he said, yeah, it doesn't, he said, lightning just goes anywhere it wants to, which is true. But yeah, this will be controversial, but I don't run anything grounded out here. I just don't. First of all, it would be a huge expense for me to, to drill into lava and get a decent ground with that kind of ground. Now, I've heard other people doing some crazy things out here. Depending where you live on the island out here, there are places where you have really nice soil. You can pound a ground rod into there, no problem here. You just can't. I've seen people churn up with a backhoe and bury a ground rod horizontally with enough earth that they can actually get a good ground read. For 30 years, I've run nothing but ungrounded systems. I've suffered a little loss on two direct hits. You know, portable solar array here, 400 watts. Actually, that's a 200 watt, excuse me, 200 watts. Doesn't even come with a grounding thing on these little portable panels. This 100 watts, 250 watts, I use just to charge a small power station, ungrounded. A 400 watt one that I just talked about the other day, ungrounded. When the house took that direct hit here years ago, I had lots of hard wire security cameras going around the property to different places. Those lines became vaporized. I never even found anything but the plastic covering on some of those hard wires. So I personally don't lose any sleep over the fact my systems are not grounded. Uh, I'm open to uh, whatever criticism you might want to throw my way. But I have literally been hit by lightning in my dwelling in two places I've lived at. Uh, the stuff that I lost wasn't saved by grounding. And I lost a lot of stuff, like I said, that was... I mean, sitting in a box, not even being used. So um, I don't see what the grounding would have done for me in that situation. Now, you know, I don't think it can be argued, you know, the, the uh, value of having some grounding. I, I, I'm not uh, saying that, but especially for some EMP type, you know, nearby hits and things like that, I'm sure uh, it'd be good to absorb some of that energy. But, and I've had both of that too. I mean, those trees up in the Colorado mountains, every tree around my dwelling was striped from top to bottom from lightning over the years. And it was only on that direct hit that blew a hole through the house that I lost any equipment and I was grounded. So yeah, one time on a grounded system, lost some equipment on a direct hit and one time lost some equipment on everything being ungrounded. So for me, uh, it hasn't seemed to make much of a difference. The other thing I'll say about that lightning that hit this place out here was I don't know exactly where it made contact with anything out here initially, but it went down into the ground and blew a trench through the lava rock about six, eight inches deep, all the way to the corner of a metal pole that I was using as part of my carport system. And it pulverized that lava. And I'm talking about a trench. I'm looking in the area that it went right now, and now I've got the water tank and stuff over it right now. But, I mean, we're talking 60 feet through lava, eight inches deep, pulverized that. And I was sitting in my bed, huddled up, scared to death, and it sounded like a million BBs being thrown on my roof, the metal roof. And I thought, what in the world was that? And it wasn't until the next day I went out there, there was little pieces of lava that had been thrown up out of the trench that that lava created running through the ground. And it looked, and it looked like it stopped dead on that metal pole of a leg for the carport. 
And I mean, I had to go up there and sweep off pounds of pulverized lava, all about the size of a BB. And that's what it sounded like. Someone dumped a million BBs on my roof. And when it was pitch dark and lightning, you know, I didn't dare go outside or even crawl out of bed. I was amazed. I was amazed at what I saw, that it pulverized a trench through lava rock. So I have a healthy respect for, for lightning. Um, and that's my grounding, which is no grounding. And I really feel like I do okay. I mean, yeah. So I really want to hear what you guys think and your experience around lightning. And like I said, this is just how I'm doing it. And I'm just sharing it with you guys. Uh, so, yeah, I can take the criticism because uh, I know that there's going to be some on running ungrounded systems. But I know a lot of people running ungrounded systems. I know a lot of people running grounded systems. I don't know. In my case, there hasn't been any real difference like i said one really good grounded system after years of not having that took a direct hit didn't matter and out here a direct hit you know would a light would a rod ground rod made any difference i don't think so on a direct hit and that's what the insurance adjuster said that's what my solar guy in Colorado said, who he saw tons and tons and tons of damage. I mean, he used to sh bring me and show me panels that were like burnt to a crisp where the panel took a direct hit. So obviously I never had a panel on my roof or whatever array I was using take a direct hit, but I've taken direct hits around and not even the littlest diode in a solar panel failed. So yeah, lightning does what it wants to do in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> goes where it wants, in my opinion. And if I take a direct hit, I expect I'm going to lose some equipment. So thanks to Brother Joe for uh, posing that question and just asking, what am I doing about my solar panels? Are they just thrown out there ungrounded? Yes, sir, they are. Um, not saying that that's what anyone else should do. I'm certainly not saying that, right? Okay. But that's what I do. That's what I do. And I'm not that worried about it. All right, you guys, keep them coming. Uh, comments, let me have it if you will. And uh, but I'm doing okay. Thirty years off grid, hundred percent on solar. Doing all right. All right. Aloha, everybody. Catch you on the next one. I need to be grounded. And by me, I mean me personally. Yeah. All my golfing buddies in Colorado, when we used to golf all the time, I mean, they knew of my lightning history. And I mean, if there was lightning way off on the horizon, they would say, time to pack up and roll out of here because Bob's with us. <laughs> and that's true. So a typical bolt of lightning 300 million volts. Yeah, that's a lot. On a direct hit, is a ground rod going to help you with that kind of power? Yeah, I don't know. I've heard of people's grounding systems that were melted on direct hits. So now from something out there, you know, nearby, EMP, yeah, probably help you. I know a guy, and I've gone down and showed you a couple of videos on his house over the years. Um, he blows fuses every time there's a nearby hit. And all of his <clears throat> very expensive lightning gear uh, gets fried. And, and he gets frustrated that every time lightning nowhere near is taking out some of his stuff. So, yeah, that's a lot of power. So let me know your experience with lightning and your systems, you guys, and all the experiences out there. I'm sure they'll be vast. Yeah, be an interesting conversation. Just don't make me too scared. I'm doing all right. <laughs>